But um, I'm gonna actually just let her start off, cause I was gonna say, where are we even starting? Where we started? Where we started? I mean, we're just gonna start with you. Just how did you feel during your during your pregnancy? Oh. I'm gonna start there. Oh, in that case. First trimester, no morning sickness. Good, because I was worried about that, because everybody talks about the morning sickness, and I, you know, you don't want to see a lady going through all of that stuff, you know? So I was very glad that she didn't go through that also. Yeah. But. So, first trimester was pretty easy. Mm -hmm. I was losing weight, but I guess that's normal. Um, I was, and this goes through all my trimesters. I had no cravings. I had. I had most of the cravings. Oh, he he was having the pregnancy <laughs> symptoms because I did not. I had no cravings. I didn't even want to eat. He he wanted to eat everything. <laughs> and at first, I, I really didn't gain. It may seem I gained a, a lot of weight, you would say, but I really didn't gain that much weight. Cause I was like one seventy three. Then I lost weight to one sixty eight. And then I think by the time I gave birth, I was like 189. So it, in technicality, 173 to 189 is really not that much. You didn't gain any pregnancy weight. I really didn't gain that much weight. So for me, it was like, okay. And I, I know, but he was worried because he was like, oh my gosh, she's barely eating. Is the baby okay? But I knew, I know a little bit about Mother Nature and I knew... You had some extra things on the body, wow. <laughs> you know, for her to eat off of. So I really wasn't too concerned, but I know you giving your body nutrients, you know, so you could be strong during that process. That's what I was just mostly worried about. But her body was, she was going to figure out a way to eat. I mean, you got enough to eat, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, I got a lot. <laughs> but no, though, but I mean, it was, it was cool. But all in all... My pregnancy was actually not that bad. I did have moments where I kind of had to force myself to eat. Because if I didn't, I'll start feeling weak and uh. And then there was a few times when I was at work, I felt dizzy, like I was going to fall down. And that was not good. Um, but I think I was just trying my best to stay hydrated. But all I pretty much drank was water. So it was pretty much all in all, my pregnancy was pretty good. You know, I had my issues at work, but past all of that... During my pregnancy, that's what I mean. But past all of that, I was good. And you know what really helped out? I mean, we live on the third floor, so that was a workout on a regular. Mm -hmm. It was a workout. And I, actually, I even worked to the very end. Yeah. I worked to what? Like, all the way to like my nine, my nine months. Mm -hmm. My nine months. I, my last month. Because I, st I was pregnant until like the 10th month, like 40 weeks. That last four weeks, I stayed at home. But the entire time I worked, and I don't just do no office job, I do some lifting. <laughs> so I did that. So I said it was a little extra, extra, but I think all in all that helped because I was being active. I didn't do extra activity like workouts. Yeah. My job and these stairs was my workout, yeah. and that was fine. Yeah. Thank God. I know. But, yeah. but what about the fibroids? I know we had that <gasps> issue with the fibroids and everything. That's how the did only I issue. I don't know how that. she forget about her own body. I'm always reminding her about her own body. <laughs> did you drink water today? Oh, no, I didn't. Oh, I forget. It's true. You <laughs> did remind me of a lot of things. <laughs> but that's the only issue that we she had during her pregnancy was her fibroid. Which I, I will let her explain more, you know, that. You guys. I think I was around six months. It was in October. Mm -hmm. That's all I remember. It was in October. And I remember I had just gone off work on a Friday. I was chilling at the house. Then out of nowhere, I was like, hmm, I'm feeling some pain. And I was like, is it, uh, didn't we think it was a contraction? So what was it? I mean, Braxton Hicks. Well, we didn't know yeah. at the time. Yeah. We were just like, it's just a pain that's consistent. Like, you'll come and they'll kind of go away a little bit, but come back. But it was like very close together. But I was like, I can endure it. It's fine. But I noticed it was like four hours later. Because I think by the time we noticed, like, wait a minute, it's been too long. It was around what, midnight? Yeah. You still was going through the pains. I was going through the pains. I was looking on Google or YouTube trying to figure out. I started doing like little workouts. And the pain was pretty much on my hips, on my hip bone. Uh, first it was on one side of my hip bone. Then it went on 
both of my hip bones and then started going to my back and this is me trying different workouts and I felt like the workouts were making it worse so I called the hospital and they were like yeah just go get yourself checked out so we went to go get ourselves checked out went to the emergency room checked out yes emergency room checked out so yeah so we went to the emergency room and they ran little tests on her or whatever one night. Just checked my cervix. Pretty much. And gave me IV. Mm -hmm. And then they just waited a little bit to check on me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the pain was still there. When we came home, the pain was still there. It wasn't as bad. But it was still there. Mm -hmm. And then I noticed the pain. Before, keep in mind, the pain was my bone. And my lower back. It was my bone. So the doctor over there said it was Braxton Hicks. We're like, cool, cool, cool. Came home. All of a sudden, the pain moved to like a bulging, mm -hmm. like a bulge right here. Actually, yeah, it was like a bulge up here. And keep, that's different pain. That one was painful. It wasn't yeah. as bad. It just hurt. Whenever I tried to make some movements, it would hurt. Like something was right there blocking me, hurting. We did not know what it was. We just knew, make certain moves, I'm in pain. I was crying pretty much every day because I was in pain. And I'm like, I don't know what's wrong with me. So then I called. I think I stayed here for a few days because I, I called and I made an appointment on Wednesday. And keep in mind, I found I was feeling pain on Friday. So we made an appointment for, I believe, Wednesday. And they were like, Yeah, come in Wednesday. We'll check it out. We go into the doctor's office, and the lady's like, It doesn't matter what happened at the other place because the pain is different. Before was my bone pain. Now it's an actual bulging pain right by, by my ribs. And the lady was like, I can't do anything for you. I don't have the paperwork. I'm like, it's different though. Whatever paperwork you're going to see with them is not the same. She was like, hey, I can't help you. I can't do anything about it. Then she touched my stomach and she was like, it's how it feels like your placenta. I remember, and my mama can vouch for me that she said that we were both, me and my mama were both like, but I didn't know no better. So I didn't know what to say. And I think... We were just, the doctor was just saying a lot. So we were just like, the doctor pretty much said, there's nothing I can do for you. Go sit with your pain and monitor. And I told her, I've been already been sitting with this pain. But she was like, yeah, just go home. So I limped. Me and my mama limped. I limped my butt out of there. Then instead of me coming here home, we drove all the way to where my parents stayed. That drive, I don't know what it was. Every single bump in the car was making that little because I was a pain right here and it was making it get bigger and bigger and bigger and I felt stiff by the time I made it to my family's house I could not walk I swear the neighbors were looking at me like you need help I was like he's okay because by the time you help me you'll be annoyed <laughs> it was bad it took me like a good five minutes to be able to even sit down I was crying my parents were looking at me like you shouldn't be feeling this type of pain. even your mom said it too mm -hmm. you shouldn't be feeling this type of pain like that's not normal so the next day we ended up going to a clinic at first we went to a little clinic they were like yeah i can't do nothing go to your doctor then my i called my doctor's office they didn't pick up and they did not call me back so i'm like well they're being useless to me so i had to go to another hospital but i went to labor and delivery Whenever I went there, they're the ones who did all the tests on me. Anne, look at you. Look at your heartbeat. Look at your mommy. Change your mind. It's piling up. Oh my gosh, yes. Okay. So I'm going to turn this off for now. So I'm going to give you this Tylenol and the MRI um, guy is on his way up to come get you, okay? And we ended up figuring out it was a fibroid 7.3 inch inches. I don't remember. Centimeters. I'm not sure. It was 7.3. And pretty much it's the size of a peach. That's what's there. And that's what's hurting me. And they told me they can't do nothing about it. At least I knew what it was, you know? Because other than that, when you don't know what it is, you're just thinking the worst of the worst. Something's wrong will happen with the baby. Then, and then I ended up booking an appointment with my doctor. When I got there, she was like, I, I'm trying to think of the foolishness that she was saying. I mean, I don't know. I, don't, I wasn't there. So don't she, know. she pretty much came up with every excuse. I was like, why, when I came here in pain, why didn't you guys check me out? She was like, well, you're not 20, you weren't 20 weeks, which was a lie because 24 weeks before at the heart ER. Then she was like, oh, um, it's COVID time. 
we wanted to monitor your pain more and i was like i've already been sitting in pain it was just excuse of excuse of excuse of why she didn't check me out and then she was like do you just need to know what do you just need to know what it is for for you to feel better because by the time i made it to her her, her office the pain magically disappeared remember mm. no did it disappear when i went to see her again yeah but that time my, the pain actually disappeared so i was in pain for two weeks or a week two weeks or a week and a half about a week and a half, a week and a half. The, thank god it went away passed that with the doctor i ended up leaving that doctor <laughs> and i ended up finding the doctor that i have now thank the lord <laughs> Yeah, so with that being said, I mean, she was pretty far along whenever she finally decided to leave the doctor. I was 30 weeks by the yeah. time I found the doc my new doctor, which is And I was amazing. like, why go through the headache? You know what I mean? But I knew I really, of, of, why go through the headache of changing doctors, you know? But at the same time, you know, if you're not comfortable going to a doctor, it don't matter your situation. Go find you another doctor. If your gut instincts tell you you're not, that's, that's, that, that applies to everything. You know what I mean? You don't feel comfortable doing it, don't do it, you know? And she didn't feel comfortable going to the doctor and, you know. Um, I was pretty much, the feeling that I was feeling was, the way that doctor was treating me during the whole fibroid, to me was kind of telling how she would treat me during labor. And so I was thinking, she may take care of the baby, but I would be left dead on the table. And that's how I felt. And it was tripping me out. The fact that I was thinking she's going to kill me. She's going to kill me. And I was like, I got to go. I got to go. But yeah. So. So yeah. But other than the fibroid for those week and a half, it was lovely. <laughs> Funny enough, during that fibroid session, we were like, no more. No more kids. <laughs> he was tripping. I was tripping. It was a mess. But. After that, near the end of the trimester, lovely. I had, I was trying to savor that pregnancy. I was like, the, my doc, my new doctor wanted to induce me. I was like, nope, let's wait till forty weeks. She did. She wanted to, no, 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 sorry. She wanted to induce me at thirty-nine weeks. I said, no, let's wait it out. Thank God I did, because at thirty-nine weeks, we live in Texas. We had that um, winter storm. The yeah, winter, storm. winter storm. And. I was telling her stay inside, but I had no contractions, so I didn't think she was gonna come anyway, to be honest. Thank God. But we did not want her to come early. Then the week after, that's when that's when we had the baby. The week after the storm, they had told us we we're supposed to have the baby uh, an inducing time. We were supposed to be there to be induced. Be there at five a.m. They called us at eleven or midnight before, you know, the day before. And they were like, actually, don't come at 5 in the morning. Come at 7, but we'll call you before you start heading Which out. Which was cool with us, because I'm like, more rest time. Shoot, because, look, for real. Our silly selves, we, you know, we did have some things packed and ready to go. But, you know, whenever you're getting ready for a new, a new human in the world, you know, you like, oh, I need this. Oh, we didn't even have this. Oh, let's pack this. It's always was just something that you can add to the bag. You know, so we was like, oh, cool. We get to sleep in the next shower and uh, take our time packing. Bed, you know, so. We took our time yeah, for sure. we did, but. Then they called us at five and they were like, you know what? We'll call you on when you should leave. So we're thinking. More sleep time? <laughs> more sleep time. We're thinking they probably going to push us again till the next day. Because they kept saying they were so booked in mm -hmm. their maternity ward yeah. that. They were like, it's just so full. Mm -hmm. You're induced. We, you take your time because you're fine. So we were like, okay. Shit, we started making plans. We did. We started making plans. <laughs> like, we ain't having a baby that day. <laughs> so we over here rested, chilled. Then we got mm -hmm. that call at 9. At 9, the lady was like, come in. Let's do this. We were like, uh, okay. is this real? Mm -hmm. At least I was feeling that way. I'm like, oh my gosh, it's really happening. But our special selves, we took our precious time. We sh took our time to shower, get ready, cleaned up. No, we didn't clean up. Did no. we clean up? No, we didn't clean up. Just actually really fully packed because we stopped packing. And we did not arrive to the hospital until noon. They had even called us and they were like, uh, are y'all still coming? Mm -hmm. And this man missed the exit. So we kept going in a circle. I'm like, thank God I wasn't really in like full-blown labor. Because I would have been mad at this man missing the exit. 
<laughs> it for a 20 minute ride took us pretty much an hour or 40 no, it minutes didn't. it did it took us 40 minutes <laughs> anyway we got in there all right this is the day that she comes out today's the day <laughs> Today is the day. Look at that stain on my shirt. I told you. No one can stain. see it. No one can see it. Anyways, it's been a little bit of movement. You're supposed to. We were supposed to go in at five. Thank God they kept calling though. I will tell you that. I know from five that they moved it to seven thirty. Then they were like, "Don't leave until we call you." Yeah. They called us and said, we stayed our precious time. Well, they did. They, they didn't give us a specific time. That's so. true. They just said, "Just start making your way this way." So now. We're going to start making our way. Just, oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> I guess I'm excited right now than nervous, which is great. That's good. Because, yeah. Mombi, we said, me and you are going to help each other out. I'm going to try to make it easy for you, and you make it easy for me. And because you're making it easy for me, I'm making it easy for you by being in a good mood and relaxed so you can slide on out. <laughs> Anything you want to say? See you in a little bit. I know. Mm. Your mommy and your daddy. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you know, we're gonna head to the hospital. We got in there at what twelve thirty, I believe. Then we got settled in. Mm -hmm. I think at one thirty or yeah, two. About one thirty. One thirty. Like they gave me the Cetaphil, a little tiny. They pill. started getting ready to induce her. There you go. Yeah. And they ended up giving me a little Cetaphil, little, little quarter of a pill. It was a full pill, but it was very small. No, it wasn't full. They oh, cut it. Gave you half, they gave me No, they gave me a quarter. A quarter. Yeah. And they were putting it in my vagina, on my cervix. cervix, by my cervix. And it was supposed to induce me. They ended up putting it in there, and I was like, this is labor? Well, it was actually a process. That one pill wasn't supposed to get you all the way there. Everything, every, all the it was supposed to start getting things moving, though. And it did. Well, when I came in, I was already con having contractions. And my contractions were already, like, what, four, four minutes apart? Mm -hmm. Well, it was varying from two to four minutes. And they said after, like, what, six hours, they were going to put another one in. But they never did because my contractions were two to four minutes apart. And I felt nothing. I felt no pain. I was just, I'm going to contractions. Okay. I was like, bet. I get to keep all my fingers. Yes. <laughs> I'm like, well, shoot, this is pretty easy. Mm -hmm. So all of a sudden, six hours pass. Then they're like, yeah, we're going to put the balloon. And the balloon is the, there's a balloon that they're going to put inside my cervix with the baby. And then they're going to fill up another balloon right underneath my cervix. They're filling it with water. No, they actually put two. Oh, it was two? Yeah, for me, they put two. They put mm -hmm. one inside my cervix, and I think they put eight cc, I believe, on uh, both of them. They filled it up. With water. Mm -hmm. So there was one inside with the baby and one at the bottom. And whenever they pretty much were inserting the balloon, me and my doctor were kiki king right there. I remember I was laughing with my doctor. The nurse and the doctor were looking at me like, you remember what they said? Mm, I don't remember. They were like, um, you're supposed to be just crying. You're supposed to be in much. pain. How are you mm -hmm. laughing during this whole process? Mm -hmm. I was like, was I supposed to be in pain? I didn't know. <laughs> I was like, okay, cool. Oh, cool. <laughs> so all of a sudden, they said that's going to stay in me, what, like 12 hours? And, oh, get was things rolling. Because I think, because remember, they came, after they put that in, but they didn't come in until the next day. Maybe it was like six hours, I think. Because they put that at five. Well, you remember, so you say 12, 12. They put that around 5.30, and they said, I think it was 12 hours because my doctor said, I'm going to come in the next day. But one thing is, right before she came in to put the balloon, I was like, oh, my God, this is easy. Mm -hmm. I was like, I was telling my doctor, oh, labor's easy. Is this the case? He was like, I will not be happy until you're in pain, remember? She was like, I'm not happy. <laughs> so all of a sudden, um, the entire night I was fine. I just maybe little little bit of pain, but it was so little that it felt like nothing. I could really like kind of rest. So I was like, well, this is pretty easy. I ain't tripping. Um, the next day comes along. My doctor comes in and I'm like, I'm still chilling. <laughs> She's like, I'm not happy. It was funny. She, the banter. It was fun. <laughs> I don't know you look like. You, this is how you talk to your doctor? <laughs> no, cool. She's young, 
woman. So yeah. So either way, she said she was gonna come in the next day to break my water. That lady came in. Pop. It was a really the water was like warm. I was like, ooh, it kind of made me feel like, oh, I'm gonna go swim. <laughs> but anyway, she broke my water, and boom, that's when the pain started. It was painful. I did not have an epidural, only on that. And for a moment, I was I was considering it because it was getting a lot. But one of the the nurse that was there, she was like, if the pain is in your back. This might still feel the pain. That's how she said it to me. And I was like, well, there's no point of breaking if I'm still going to feel the pain. So, and I noticed, it's all about position. I, I, I used to make it quicker. If I lay on my back, I could not handle. If I, they told me I could sit up, like, have the bed part, sit down like this, and then the lower part, bring it down so my foot is kind of resting. Like, like that. Like I'm sitting in a chair. And I was able to deal. And then... I don't know how to transition to the actual. Then eventually, it was time for the baby to come out. I was well, they, ready. They came and actually took the balloon out. Oh yeah, they did. When they came and took the balloon out, she was supposed to be how many centimeters? I was supposed to be six six, cent six centimeters. Yeah. So. But I was four. Yeah. So we still were behind, and they were looking yeah. at that's odd because they're like, and especially because I had both balloons, mm -hmm. they were like, how am I not at six? So yeah. they were like, yeah. Yeah. So we still had to wait a little bit while before she was able to um, yeah. have birth. Because the lady came in at 8, around 8 or 9 in the morning to break my water. Mm -hmm. And um, I didn't. And we were ready to push around, what, About, 3? Yeah. Yeah, we were ready to start pushing around 3 p.m. Or like 2.45, something like or that. Or 2.45. Mm -hmm. But that time frame was just horrible. Horrible. <laughs> Um, my mom ended up coming, which was nice. Yeah, that was, that was, it was nice to have her in there. I was ready for the baby to come out. Like, funny, I was too. I funny enough, I was like, I just want to, it's funny because you just want to give up and just stop. Like, I quit, I quit. But the foolery. Quit what? <laughs> give up what? Mm. There's no way to get out of this one. You got to go through it. So, mm. anyway, so whenever it was time to push, I don't even know how they're gonna start this. Well, section. I mean, actually, like, as the time went on, her cervix started to open up, you know, of course. Oh, yeah. So, because Jerry was the nurse, a really good nurse, Jerry. She's a nice like lady. Like Jerry. Um, she came in, you know, kept encouraging her, telling her, you know, she, you can do this without the epidural, you know, you're doing good and stuff. Just she giving really her a lot, of, my wishes. a lot of encouraging words. Which, you know, a lot of the people that was there was very, um, very encouraging, you know, supportive, supportive with the, with her whole process and not trying to push the upper door on her, mm -hmm. you know, because sometimes people can go to certain hospitals and they be trying to force that upper door on some on a lot of women, mm -hmm. but they were they were really you know like happy about it, you know what I mean? It was a cool no upper door, yes, you know, I'm like let's do it, you know, but so as we was waiting for her cervix to open, you know, she finally it, it moved after a while. It didn't move pretty. Well, because by the time my mom came, it was eight centimeters. Yeah, yeah. So then she finally hit ten, and Jerry had got on the phone and was like, "Yep, she's ready." And the doctor was on the phone and was like, "Okay, what are you waiting on? Have her start pushing." Oh, that's what she said. Yeah, she was like, "Have her start pushing. I'm on my way." So that's why Jerry went on ahead and started oh, started with you being pushed. I was wondering why yeah. she started. Mm -hmm. So as she started pushing and pushing. About about, mm, about five minutes, ten minutes went by before the doctor finally came in, and they all kind of came in. The other little doctors and stuff started getting the little baby table ready and etc. Oh, and yeah. all that kind of stuff, you know. So, and it's only about mm, I'm gonna we only had maybe like five people in there, four to five people de delivering birth, you know. Was it? Yeah, you had your doctor. She had an assistant, and then it was like the pediatrician for the baby. And it was another lady helping me, you know, hold your leg. It was only about five people in Jerry. Okay. I was going to say, the way, and I just want to break this up because to me it was funny. They were like, okay, time to bring your legs up, you know? And I had, I was like, I can't, I can't hold them up. So, like he said, him and another doctor were on one leg. My mom and another nurse, I mean, not doctor, nurse, was in my other leg holding my leg up. And then they were holding the legs and... <clears throat> 
when every time they told me to push, I felt like my legs were just going, I was pushing them away, and I was like, Drake, hold the leg. <laughs> You're holding, not holding the I was leg. Holding them damn legs. Ooh. <laughs> she pooping. <laughs> <laughs> Big poop. Okay, so every time I push, my legs will go like this instead of staying here. And I was like, Dre, after my contraction's over, Dre, you're not holding the leg. Dre's like, like, holding the leg. I'm like, why are you picking on me? <laughs> I ain't, it's you, you have two damn legs. Why you get on me first? You know, and I'm like, I'm holding the legs. You know what I'm saying? She get on me first. I'm like. Then all of a sudden. That's a big movie. And it's probably going to be going through that diaper. I know. Come on, let's hurry up. Okay, we're gonna hurry this up, baby. Okay. <laughs> anyway, it's a poop over there. So all of a sudden, they are like, "Okay, you, you're gonna hold the sheet." You yeah. remember? Mm -hmm. Then all of a sudden, I felt like when it was time to push, I was pulling the doctor or something because she wasn't giving me no re resistance. That little one was a hundred pounds soaking wet. Yeah, pretty much. She, she she should not. We did it. She only did it one time with the sheet, and she moved along because she realized she was doing nothing nothing to help the situation then after a while i was like you know what i'll do it myself and i grabbed my leg <laughs> one of the nurses was like this girl's running the show over here she's the one giving birth <laughs> she's the one giving instructions and shit and i'm like woman shut up and push this baby out i couldn't i couldn't she focus here telling everybody else what to do I'm like, I push this baby out, you woman. I couldn't focus because in my head, every time I try to push my legs, I had nothing. So I just outdo it myself. I held my legs and I started pushing. <laughs> but the pushing, you gotta tell us because I didn't know what I was pushing. So after a while, I just felt like my ears were gonna pop, my face was gonna explode. And then I, after a while, I was like, you know what? I don't know if I'm doing right. I was just telling myself, just. TMI, just blow up your butthole. <laughs> That's how so much time to put it. Just blow it up. Blow it up. Then they were like, we see the head. I was like, do you really? Or you just telling me that just to tell me that, remember? They can see the head. I know, but I felt like they were just telling me that to get me like feeling like I could do it. Oh. And then they were telling me, which is hard. Whenever they would tell me to push, remember how they were like, oh my God. Um push and then they're like do it again and i'm like i didn't even get air so i was always breaking it because i was so exhausted and then all of a sudden just fast then all of a sudden they said they saw the baby's head and I, i'll let you come in there because you saw I mean, at that point the they told me to stop pushing and no, they, she was pushing 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 and then at that point the baby head has already came out the vagina only the head so by this time i look and i'm like Oh, here's the baby. The baby is coming out. And then as time went on, I see the doctor like this. Panicking. Because I'm like, her head, where's the rest of the body? You know, like the body's supposed to be coming out. So I couldn't look anymore. Like I had to turn my head because I'm just thinking the worst, you know. And it was a very dramatic experience in my life. I think about that even whenever I look at her sometimes and I, I think about that experience. But like next thing I know, that doctor screamed, call code, some some doctor code. You know, she call code blood team, blah blah. And I'm like, oh my god. Oh my god. Like this is not good. You know, and I mean time is ticking. The baby head just still stuck there. And I knew that couldn't have been good, you know. And like in my head, I'm just thinking the worst. I'm thinking if they don't get this baby out, you know, we're gonna end up losing her, you know. Cause he said her head was dangling. And out. just, oh, it was, it's a nightmare. It was a nightmare for me. So next thing I know, you know, if it seemed like hours, you know, next thing I know, a team of people come running through the room. That room got so packed so quick. I mean, it was crazy. Like, they came. A woman came and, like, stood on top of her stomach. It was, like, like pressing. Got on a step stool. Like, like pressing with everything. It and, felt like she was not on my stomach. She was on my pelvic. And, you know, we like. didn't, you know, we don't, I, I didn't understand what was going on. You know, I mean, I just 
baby stunk. And I know? was all loopy because I think they hurried up and gave me some. They didn't shots. even give you that chair. They didn't? You didn't get that chair. Okay, well, so, I was still just out of it. Like, yeah, what's going on? What's much. going on? Type deal. So, next thing I know, and like. Trying to focus because I was like. Because, <gasps> you know, he told me to uh, stop pushing. And I was just. They ended up giving me oxygen. What was that too early? No, they ended up giving you oxygen and all of that. So, then next thing I know, all these people come in. And, like, they told me and her mom to step back, you know? So we step back and, oh, oh, let me get baby. You guys can see baby too. Say hi. Say hi. Here she is. Say hey, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> but. <laughs> so, yeah. So, um, next thing I know, all these people come running in and the doctor had put her, you know, told the other little assist, the other assistant nurse behind her, give me, you know, I don't remember the tool she said. And next thing I know, she got this little knife and she made this slit. Don't yourself. She made this slit on the, oh, you still taking a dump? I mean, it's serious. She's gonna keep crying when she takes that serious dump. Lord. And the doctor had made this slit and, um, Next thing I know, just blood flowing like a water faucet. I mean, it was flowing. And I guess they just gave them just enough to be able to get her hand in there and pull the baby out. You know, so when she pulled the baby out, the baby wasn't making any noise. The baby, the baby looked at lifeless, you know, Look, she looked at lifeless. And like, they had all these people hovered over her, trying to, I guess, clear out her lungs and everything to get her, you know, you know, making and, some noise. And I was over here like, I don't and, hear the baby crying. Yeah. Why isn't the baby crying? Nobody says nothing. Silent. I, then I asked again. Nobody said nothing. So I, in my head, I was like, something's going on. So I'll leave them alone to do it. Yeah, but by that time, though, Mama already didn't just got a shot afterwards. So Mama is like half yeah. in and half out, you know. But, um. But, uh, so yeah, so after all of that, they hurried up, you know, took her to the NICU. They hurried up, took her to the NICU. But she did cry, though. She did cry. Yeah, she did. She did afterwards. They let me hold her and everything. I was smiling. Even though it wasn't the picture that I wanted, you know. I was thinking I was smiling, but I was over here like, Yeah, yeah. And they told, he, the doctor was like, you want to cut the umbilical cord? Oh, yeah, she was like, you want to cut the umbilical cord? Snip. I'm like, yeah, I wanted to cut it, but at the same time, I didn't because. There was so much going on, huh? It was Tom. Tom was the ticking, ticking, and they had to hurry up and cater to her fast. They didn't have time to show me cut here and all the fun stuff, you know. Yeah. But um, she she was pretty much stuck there for two minutes. Yeah. And I know minutes. they usually have five minutes is the cutoff yeah. of it's detrimental. Yeah. But so um yeah so she went to the make room. They sold mom up. And then everybody, and the room was empty. And the room was empty. I mean, you would was, never think anything happened in there. It How? was it was a nightmare for me. I ain't never seen that much blood. Just I mean, just the the, the sheer. Let me get a best car. The sheer panic in there from everybody, which is good that everybody panicked like that because it caused everybody to move with a sense of urgency. But if you never been in the hospital and seen anything like that. I mean, it's so terrifying because anytime it's panic and a sense of urgency like that, ain't nothing good. You know, it's nothing good. But uh, so how long we stayed in the hospital for how many? And then her her poor stuff, she barely was able to walk. Like yeah, whenever her, they transferred me, um, it felt every time I would they would tell me to get up and walk or even just move in the bed, I felt like my legs would just yeah. limp, like they were noodles. Yeah. The majority of the time they were like, did you get a epidural? I was like, no, a C-section, no. They were looking at me like, then why is your legs not working? Well, we just, you know, her shoulder, her hips got damaged. Yeah. From the... I, to me, I don't know what really happened, but I think when that lady was pushing, she was pushing my pelvic and she pushed with all her life. Which I'm like, I ain't gonna blame you. I'd rather be in the pain as long as she's here. But every time I would walk, I would hear... That's what I would hear, and I felt like my pelvic was going to break and fall apart, and I was, I, it was bad. I couldn't walk for, I, we were there for three days, because we arrived there Friday, and we left mm -hmm. there Sunday. Yeah. 
So through all of that, we stayed there. Baby stayed for four days, right? Yeah, four days. Yeah, so he stayed an extra day at the NICU uh, in the NICU. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so we stayed in there. My for about, eyes were bloodshot. Yeah, bloodshot, bloodshot from all that pushing and just the pressure building up in her head, like she was saying. I mean, it was crazy. But at the end of the day, she's here. Mama, 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 walking fine. I mean. A lot, a lot better, but she could do better. She's probably like an eighty percent. Yeah. Yeah, but other than that, mm -hmm. Mama's here fine, and his baby that desperately needs a diaper change. Mm -hmm. Mom, baby. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that baby smell. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm, even though you smell a little bit like baby vomit and Dookie, but it's all good. Say hey, world. She's here on hey. the moon B. <laughs> you little old thing. And that's our pregnancy slash labor story. Yes. So we had our our bad and our good. Yes. So yeah. It's a blessing. It really is. Oh, they did recommend me not to do it again. Yeah. Um, vaginally, because it said she, cause she was, her shoulder was stuck on my bone. They, it's shoulder dystocia. They said they don't recommend me doing it again to do a C-section. Otherwise, it could happen again. Mm -hmm. They said my blood was fighting her blood. Mm -hmm. Some type of, oh, he's A. Um, and they said most likely the next time I have a kid, my blood may fight the next kid also. Mm -hmm. But they said they'll just give me some stuff and they should be fine. She ended up having jaundice and Coombs disease. But yeah. the Coombs is because of her blood fighting. Mm -hmm. But she's a trooper. Her arm was fine. Yep, yep, they God. were like, you, you would never know she had any issues. Her eyes did have a little bit of red. Like mom. But, it, was but it wasn't as bad as mine. It was mm -hmm. just a little tiny strip. You would only see it if you were looking at her carefully. But other than that. It was all right. It was all right. We made, we made it to the other side. Safety. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Here you go. Mm, I know daddy can do the poo poo. He got her. <laughs> oh, daddy about to go. Shout daddy hold him. That's bad. Daddy bad. All right. Mm -hmm. On that case, adios. Bye. That is her. That is her.